Manic. Manic. Episodes. Guys, when I told you I didn't know what this podcast was going to be or what it's going to look like, did I deliver or what? I am currently walking in the Palisade Center Mall with a selfie stick. It's me and several hundred Hasidics that have emerged from the tunnels to do their weekly shopping. Very exciting. I couldn't be getting more just disappointed looks from the uh, from the general populace, which here's the thing. There's nobody. Huh? Vlogging, man. Just doing a pointless solo podcast while walking the mall. Do you have anything to promote? Yeah, no, my sneaker store is right here. Beneath oh, hell the yeah. Hype. If you need buy, sell, trade, or anything, we're here seven days a week. Look at that, first commercial. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Do you have anything for you? Do you have anything coming up? You know what? I have this podcast coming up, so hopefully when people. When does it drop? It drops uh, in a month. Everybody I'm do tune in, and one month from now, the bed podcast in the world is going to come out from this guy right here. Look at this. Kindness from strangers. How about that? All right, have a good one. All of the vial and vitriol that I once had is now completely gone. Guys, this podcast couldn't have been more worth it. Look at me, talking about people judging, looking through their eyebrows, livid that I'm doing this. And then the first person that I talk to is just completely kind, wanting to promote his, his store in a mall, which I have at length discussed is going to, I mean, I feel bad for him. He's gonna lose his shirt. There is no way he's gonna make money in this mall. I think he's probably a talented guy and obviously very kind and uh, has some positive energy to him, but for the love of God, get out of this sinking ship. This place is in foreclosure for $450 million. It's on a sinking landfill in West Nyack, New York. Truly, I lived here as a tot and watch, this was the new mall when I was a freshman in high school. There were no stores. I actually used to fingy some chicks downstairs uh, on the first floor because that's where it was just completely vacant. And I know that sounds completely sketchy, but you know, I was 14 at the time, so where am I gonna go? That's the thing. People that got to have sex in their house in high school, I really, I envy you, but I also think you had terrible parents. I don't know, you know, my, the only place I could have sex is my 92 Nissan Maxima. There is nothing worse than not warming that car up in the winter and then hopping in the back seat with your girlfriend just in February with freezing cold thighs clacking against each other. You try to sweat, but it freezes on your brow and you just try your very best to maintain an erection and just picture, picture everything going smoothly. No pregnancy scares, you know what I mean? I don't know what I mean. I don't know what I was talking about, but that guy completely threw me for a loop. I was about to go off on this entire thing about how everybody I've met, I, I don't know, socially I'm a mess. I get dominated constantly. You guys have heard all about it on my other podcast. If I'm at a party, I'm getting cornered by the worst guy at your party. I get a conspiracy theory to death, which again, I kind of invite into my own life by listening and smiling whenever somebody brings it up. Um, but it's just a part of my everyday life. And now I've found the inconsistency. I've been diagnosing people with mental illness lately. Pretty much anybody I meet, if they can't make eye contact, if I find their behavior to be odd in any kind of way, I'm like, oh, that person's probably got like BPD or, you know, whatever. They got something cooking in there and that's why this went weird. It's not me, it's the children that are wrong. That interaction that I just had with that guy just made me realize it's me. It's 100% me all the time. I have to be looking through the world, or at the world through a poison jizzy filter because there's no reason for me to have this negativity when guys like that exist. I feel bad for saying he's not gonna make money. I, it's not him, it's this place. It's the place he chose to put his business in. This lady does not care for me. She literally just goes, it just, oh, Foot Locker. That's the problem with doing podcasts in a mall is as soon as I pass a, a sneaker store, I'm just going to buy a pair. All right, keep going. I'm thinking about, a lot about grudges too, not the Japanese horror film, but just my relationship with them. And I almost think it's like a hereditary, it's a hereditary trait to be able to hold a grudge. I almost blamed it on being Irish, but there's so much of my personality that I blame on other things. I gotta start taking ownership or at least it's just my family specific poison genetic lineage, you know? I do, I hold grudges, you know? I just remember when I was a kid and uh, my mom would, uh, would just, you know, something would happen at high school. I'd be like really bummed out by treatment from another, 
from another classmate or something of that nature. And my mom would be like, in 20 years, Michael, you'll never even think about it. This means nothing to you. I promise in 20 years, this will not even be a memory. And guess what, mom? I'm 38. It's literally 20, 20 years later, and I have fresh simmering rage for some of the people that I hated in high school. I didn't know that until this morning. My friends and I were having our weekly conversation about prepping for the apocalypse, considering who would be on, who would be on defense, who would be our chef, who would be, uh, who would be our protector, our security. That's my boy Tony Booth. There is just not a better human being suited for that. He's more or less a human Zool from Ghostbusters, but you can kind of like unleash him on somebody. It's awesome, man. That's he's the only person I know that if I was having a fist fight in Vermont like just on the road in Vermont and I was having problems just getting beaten up by some real man that shovels snow every day of his life. Um, my friend Tony would drive to, Ver if I texted him, he would be <laughs> in Vermont in 30 minutes. I don't know how it would happen or how he'd get there or what mode of transportation he would take, but either way, he would be in Vermont in 30 minutes and he'd be covered in blood by 30 minutes and 30 seconds. It's good to have a friend like that, you know? It's good to have, a friend who's live ammunition. I'll give it, right? Hype room, we're walking by again. That's right, keep plugging. Me and my man, listen to the best podcast on earth. That's what he said. Because I know my parents hold grudges too, so why did they tell me that? Why do parents lie to their children about menial stuff like that when it would actually make us feel way better if they're just like, hey, you know that feeling you're having right now at 13? Don't worry, it's here forever that's gonna stick with you and at 40 years old or even later in life, you will wake up in a cold sweat thinking about the person who disrespected you as a sophomore in high school. Hey, remember that senior that said uh, you weren't, you just picked on you and made you feel less than and now you're taking that into job interviews as an adult? Well, guess what? You're gonna, you're gonna pop out of bed <laughs> at 55 years old and just be like, I'm gonna kill somebody. Wow, my eyes look nuts. Do you think this is a viable podcast? I mean, here's the thing. Each and every episode might be different. We might switch up some, some spots, some studios. We may make it, you know, this is obviously completely mobile. It is manic thoughts, so I do want it to seem completely off the rails. Not seem, it is. There's nothing to seem. I'm not playing any games. There's very little editing. Thank you, Nicole, for all the punch-ins and taking out all my slurs. But for the most part, it's stream of consciousness, and we're just kind of, we're just kind of exploring. Man, malls used to be the true epitome of like social gathering in America. I think that's. That's what's weird, is there's not a lot of places where people get together. Obviously, people go to bars, drink it, but, you know, drinking, watering hole, that whole thing. You see the giraffes there, human beings are not far behind. We're the same exact animals in that social way. However, the, you know, booze, I love alcohol, but again, I don't drink, and not drinking while loving alcohol, but while observing people's behavior while under the influence of alcohol gives you some pretty interesting perspective into the poison. Um, I gotta tell you, I wish there was a more peaceful concoction that we all could consume that would make a bar a more joyful place. Even now, man, you know, people are, people are together, but they're just, they're very wary of strangers. You know, very wary of people outside of their group. Very, oh, there's somebody just looking. Boom, zoom in on them, catch them, every single one. I'm like a hot girl at the gym. If you look at my ass while I'm squatting, I'm gonna fucking burn you. Ladies, I don't know if people are just gonna stare at me. I might as well just flash the cam in their face, right? Like a true piece of shit. God, I am becoming who I hate right now. I am becoming gorilla content guy. Pretty soon, you're gonna see me renting out a comedy club and making a false flag just to go viral. The mall, man, we used to come here. This, uh, we'd come, and this is not new thought, but we'd come and just hang out. It's got restaurants, it's got food, it's got movies, it's got the Autobahn, indoor speedway, end events. It's got quite a few things because this is, or at the time it was built, it's the second biggest uh, mall in the country. Now I think, you know, it's gotta be dropped down the list because what are we as Americans? We are a 
constant dick swinging competition of pointless endeavors. And uh, that's what this was. It was a space race of who could build the biggest failure, the biggest capitalistic failure. Hey, this thing looks like it's on its way out. Let's build the biggest one. Hey, Amazon looks like it's more popular than ever. Let's build a place where people have to leave their home and get not as, not as good goods. That's, that's the shitty thing, is you go to a mall and none of these places are even stores. They're actually just kind of more or less propped up business cards for these companies so you can then go shop online. Is there anything more enraging than seeing something online and being like, oh, I have that store right down the street. I actually like it when I'm in person and I can feel the material, I can try things on. I don't, I'm not just looking at a fucking picture. I feel like I'm having a human experience. But then you go to the store and you're like, oh, they've never had this item. They don't even know that it's a real item, and frankly, all of the items that they do have are covered in cobwebs and dust because nobody has shopped in this place for months. They don't care. I have another theory. This is another one I wanna to give to you guys because this has actually been bothering me for some time, and anybody I talk to about it is like, why would that bother a human being? Does it feel to you guys that especially when you go into stores, maybe like a CVS or something like that is a better example, but when you go into a store, there are always people there that are restocking. It's their job, it's part of the business, of course. However, they will not fucking move out of the way while restocking for the customer. And I get incensed by that because it's like, no, no, I'm the one you're doing that for, you see? I'm the person that's buying the goods. You are putting them on the shelf, not for the next person, but for me, who is currently here right now. And I don't know why that gets me so bothered, but it's just that mentality of like, no, next up, next up. We don't care about you, next up, next up. I bet there are people that listen to me on podcasts and you know, of course there's people that don't like me, but even the people that do like me, they hear like the progression of my anger and the things that make me mad and they have a way better sense of why I am the way that I am than I have of why I am. Let me know, give me some topics. Again, I haven't released this to the public yet. This is my second attempt at this podcast. This might just live on my phone for the rest of my life and I may just give people access to my hard drive as a really, really exclusive Patreon. You can see pictures of my wife, see my podcast, and then, you know, just thumb through all the butthole pictures that I've sent to my friend Chrissy D. Um, but either way, give me topics. Let me know things that make you upset or things that actually make you happy because we'd like to switch the entire flow of this show. It's two episodes in and I'm like, I think I should rebrand. I'm tired of being so negative. I actually think, oh, do you think I could win this? That's the claw game? Stop, 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 stop. Every time, dude. They've been making those less and less winnable because they know I'm coming. The claws have the grip of a stroke victim. They just drop everything as soon as it's within their clutches. There's nothing more infuriating. It's like, listen, it's hard enough. Why don't you just at least make it possible? And here I am, complaining about carnival games. I am, God, I stink. All right, see you next week. Manic. 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 Episodes.